continuing to bulldoze through in our review, this is Vector Edition, which you must have done. Now, something new here, even though you probably have done Vector Edition by decomposing things in X component, Y component, right? So for instance, you have this B, you can call this BX, BY, decomposing. And then you can add up all the X's, add up all the Y's, and then combining them back together. We're introducing a new form of notation. Functionally, it's actually not very much different. It does help us extend what we usually do with algebra anyways with these vectors. So what is this new notation we're talking about? Is these i hat, j hat, and maybe even k hat. You must have seen these in your textbook and some of you might have even have used them before. And the idea is quite simple. Instead of expressing your vector as some magnitude going in some direction, we can talk about the same vector to be so much in the x direction and we represent that with multiplying some number which is the magnitude of the x component times this unit vector. Unit vector meaning has a length of 1. That's the unit and i hat implies that it's in the positive x direction. So combine, it says my vector b here so far is equal to some length, which is the same as my x component, going in the positive x direction. Because 1 times any magnitude becomes that magnitude. But that's not it, right? Because to get to b, you don't you have to add up what's going on in the x, and then you go in the y, right? This is just like vector addition. Head to tail, head to tail. Boom, boom. And we'll get to the same point. So if we add that up as well, these two vectors, j being in the positive y direction, these two components will add up to give me the overall vector. And that's kind of it. It's for now, it's a basic way to still do our x and y components, but in a way that's consistent with our algebraic rules. And I'll show you what that what I mean by that as we get through these couple examples. So just like before, as we have to add up vectors in 2D, we're going to break them down into x and y components, but we're going to represent it with these i and j unit vectors. So my bx is going to be 5, in these cases there's no units, 53 degrees because it's the adjacent in the i hat, plus your 5 sine 53 in the j hat. Then we have to add up c. c is equal to 12, again positive, but then my cy is going to point negative, so we're going to include that negative sign right here. Right, then to evaluate my b plus c, so we write them out. And to add these up, this is now just what we always do with our algebra, to collect like terms. Letters, different letters, they don't mix. Right, the i's go with the i's, and the j's go with the j's. Right, just like regular algebra. You can factor out the i and the j, because they are on both of those terms. And you notice how this is exactly what we've done before, right? Adding up the x's, right? This is still all the x's, and adding all the y's separately. It's just that now what we're this procedure is now consistent with what we've always done with regular algebra. Keeping the different letters separate from each other. You punch in the calculator making sure you're in degree mode and not radian mode, you should be able to get this number right here for the i hat and j hat separately. So what this is saying is the overall vector is going to be comprised of 9 in the positive x direction and 6.4 in the negative y direction. That's what that means. You can of course combine it using Pythagoras and then find the angle, but this 
representation with univector is also just as valid to uniquely identify your vector. So you can just leave it as that actually. I'm doing part B just to show you another example, but also to highlight the consistency with the algebraic rules. We once again break down all the vectors that are involved into its i and j hat representation. For my a, they're both positive, so we have those i and j hats. For my f, both the components are negative. For my d, negative x, positive j, and you will notice that i hat and x often gets a little bit interchangeable, just like y and j hat. And now that we have everything in i and j hat notation, doing subtraction or multiplication by 2 here, for instance, follows the same algebraic rules. Then whenever you have a negative 2 multiply, you gotta multiply it into both of those. Then you collect like terms, etc, etc. And often it's a little easier to kind of collect your i and j separately like this. So when you have minus 2 times 20, you can replace that with plus 40 cosine 30. Right, you see how I'm collecting all the terms with an i in it. Then all the terms with the j in it goes here. The rest is just calculator work, so I'll leave that up to you. And we get some other i and j components. And again, this is a unique enough representation of the vector and so you don't really necessarily have to find the magnitude and angle. So hopefully as you use these more, you'll come to appreciate how it is a little more mathematically elegant, but essentially still the same procedure by doing x and y separately. It's just that now we'll do i and j separately.